Hey everybody and welcome back to Twin Chevy and today we're going to be looking at the PC SX2 emulator running on Xbox Series S and Series X. Now if you have an Xbox One, don't bother trying with this because it's not going to work. PlayStation 2 emulation isn't perfect and it's never going to be perfect because of the way the CPU is designed. Some games do run, a lot of the games actually do run really well, but some don't. For example, Shadow of the Colossus, I cannot get this running well on the Xbox Series S, whereas on my PC I can get it running at 60 frames per second. PlayStation 2 emulation is an absolute beast and they've been working on it for years upon years now and it still isn't 100% perfect and I don't think it ever will be perfect but you can play some of your favorite games and some of them do run really well and once you get them up and running it is a really satisfying thing. I'm going to throw a couple of disclaimers out there. The first one is that I'm not going to show you how to get your games or where to get your games from because that is illegal and illegal distribution of ROMs isn't allowed on YouTube and they will strike my channel down. I've already had Nintendo strike one of my videos down and I'm not going to risk that again. Number two, the BIOS as well. That is something you're going to have to source yourself from the shadier parts of the internet or you can source them from your very own PlayStation 2 if you have one. And number three, like I always said, not every game is going to run great on the Xbox. Most of them do and most of them are playable, but some will not. I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot some of that and how to get mess around with some of the settings to get some of them working. But not every game is going to work fantastic. So don't go into this expecting that all your games are just going to magically work you're going to have to put a little bit of work in if the games aren't running very well hit that like button if this video helps you out consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this and let's just dive into the video shall we So we're going to start on our PC first because we need to get the BIOS files ready and things like that. So if you've already downloaded your BIOS, there is a Xbox uh, RetroArch files that I have linked in the description down below. And this will just give you a couple of files that will help you set up. So Dolphin files, Dolphin Innies for controllers and things like that. PCSX for controllers, cheats and places like that. And we're going to put them onto the Xbox and we also have our BIOS file. Like I said, this will not be in there because I cannot distribute these. But once you've sourced them yourself, you could you will have something like this. And you just need to copy it into the PCXX2 folder of the Xbox RetroArts files or the BIOS files. You can create this yourself by creating a new folder. New folder. I'm calling it PCSX2. And then inside that, you're going to want to create another new folder called BIOS. Let me create that right now. BIOS. As you can see, it matches the one that I have on my Xbox RA files there. So Xbox PCSX2 BIOS. And you can put your BIOS in there and copy that over and that'll work just the same. The next thing we want to do is to prepare our games on the computer. We'll do everything on the computer straight away. So I've already got my retro arc and I've copied a bunch of games over. So the game formats that are acceptable here, if we go to the Libertero Wiki and we go to the uh, PCSX2, we can find the game extensions that are acceptable and do work with PCSX2. We've got bin files, CHD, CSO, GZ, ISOs, IMG, MDF, and NRG. The ones that I mostly use are ISOs or bins. They're the ones that I have in my folder here. So we'll go to P PS2 folder. I've already copied all these games over because it will take a long time for all these games to copy over. So all you do is just drop them into a PS2 folder. And then what you need to do is we just need to set up our hard drive. Now, if you've done the installation, now if you've done the installation from my previous video, then you've already done this. So you can skip this step. But if you right click on the drive, click properties, then go to security, then click advanced. And then what we need to do is to click add, select a principle, click advanced, then we need to click find now. And the one we want is all applications packages. Click add, click OK, give that full control. Click this folder, subfolders and files. So this applies to everything that's on the drive and then click OK. And then we want to click Replace All Child Object Permissions Entries with Inheritable Permission Entries that's here. Click Apply, and you're going to get a uh, message here about security, about the recycle bin, and things like that, and folders that it doesn't apply to. 
but it's going to make sure that your games run faster when they open. They're going to open faster. They're going to run faster from the USB drive. And that's just one of the steps that we need to do to optimize PS2 games for RetroArch. So once we've done all that, clicked OK out of everything, what we need to do now is to transfer our PCSX2 BIOS files over to the Xbox itself. Now, if you've installed this and you've watched my previous video on how to install RetroArch, then you'll know exactly where we're supposed to go. You can do this through the directories section, so you can swap everything. So if you have that local state problem, then you can go through the directories and you can change all the configs and move them onto the hard drive as well. I haven't tested this, so I'm not gonna show you how to do that today. So back in dev mode, if you've already installed it the way that I installed it, you're gonna have Durango FTP. You're gonna click that on, and then you have your username and password set up. I've got FTP, FTP click start that's going to start the ftp server and then we're going to move back over to the computer now on the computer i've got my xbox ra files folder there with my ps2 bios in i'm going to go over to another file explorer i'm going to click on the bar there and type in ftp colon slash slash xbox and press enter and that will bring up my xbox and I put in my password, username and password already before. It'd be FTP, FTP, because that's what I set it to. And then let's go to local folder. And then we need to find our RetroArch. So if we look on the files, we'll see RetroArch Gamer.13 RetroArch. Click on that. And then we need to go into local state. Once we're in local state, we need to go to the system folder. And as you can see, I've already copied and pasted all this over. So you just drag this over and it will take a while to do. it take like 10 to 15 minutes, I think, depending on your internet connection. It can take a long time to do. But then as you can see, my BIOS are all in there and we're all good to go on that side. When we're done with our PC. We need to move back over to our Xbox. And we obviously I'm in dev mode, but if you're not, you're going to be in the retail version. We need to plug in our hard drive into the Xbox. And if you never plugged this U a USB into the Xbox before, you're going to want to choose use as a media device so that it doesn't delete everything and format it as an Xbox backup. So we're going to we're now ready to start playing some games. So we go to RetroArch. And now we want to create a PlayStation 2 playlist. To do this, we go to import content and then we do a manual scan because PlayStation 2 games are a bit iffy with the uh, scan directory. You can do that on other consoles like GameCube and things like that, but we'll do it on this. So we choose the content directory. So I'm on dev mode, so it'll be E. If you're on retail mode, it'll probably be in the D drive, your USB. And then we click the PlayStation 2 and click scan this directory. Then you can have scan recursively on. So this is going to uh, scan all the subdirectories and stuff like that. But I don't have anything in the subdirectory, so I'm going to turn that off. And then when it says default core, we need to choose that. So press up on the D-pad, go all the way up, and we need to find Sony PlayStation 2 PCSX2, and then just click start scan. And now when I go back, PS2 section, I can change that to just PlayStation 2, but all my PlayStation 2 games are now here to choose from. Okay. So now our PlayStation games are set to go. It's now a case of setting up the BIOS. So to do this, what I like to do is I like to just load the core. So I'll go up to the main menu, load the core, and then find the PlayStation 2 emulator, PCSX2. Click that, and I start the core in BIOS mode. And that's going to load up the BIOS. This way we can format our memory cards and get everything ready and save the configuration, the default configuration that we want to use for our games. So if I go to the browser now, you're going to see that I've already set up my two memory cards and they're both formatted. They usually get formatted with in games as well, but you can also do that here by clicking enter. See, there's no data. That's a 32 megabyte one. And that's an eight megabytes one. So when you click this X, it's going to ask you if you want to format it and then you format it. But to get those up and running in the first place, we need to press our hotkey, which join our initial setup. If you've not done that, then you can go to settings, input, and then where it says hotkeys, menu toggle controller combo. I have mine set to start and select. So when I press start and select, it brings this menu up over the top of my BIOS. So we go back to the quick menu, and this is the menu that will pop up when you press start and select. Go to options and manage core options. 
And this is where we're going to save our options to the default options for the BIOS. And then we go to memory cards. Slot one, I have the eight megabytes one because not all games support the 32 megabyte memory card. And then slot two, I have a shared memory card, 32 megabytes. And I have, they get saved automatically to the system. System options, we can choose which BIOS we want to use. So if you've got a multiple BIOS, you can choose either the European, Japan, USA, depending on what game you play or where you've got the game from. If it's NTSC, you're going to want USA. If it's the Japanese version, you're going to want Japan, Europe, etc., etc. Choose boot to BIOS. I turn that, I'm going to turn that off. Then video sections, renderer is, I've got that set to auto. And from what I've seen so far, I don't think um, Xbox Series S supports OpenGL because when I've tried to change games that usually work in OpenGL on the PC to OpenGL, it's not worked at all. So if anyone knows how to get that running or if that is correct, please let me know down in the comments because I've been trying to get Shadow of the Colossus to work, which runs so much better on OpenGL than it does on the Direct 3D 11. Internal resolution, I mine set to 1080p. But you can try it at 2K, you can try it at 4K, I just don't have the display right now. Deinterlacing mode, keep that automatic. Aspect ratio, 16 by 9. And then enable widescreen patches, I have that switched off. But if there's a game that doesn't support widescreen, you're going to want to switch that on. Enable 60, F patch, 60 FPS patches, I put that on. So what that'll do is that'll find a 60 FPS patch for you. Uh, FXAA, this is all basically... If your game is stuttering, then you're going to want to turn these off and you can do that in the game as well. I put it on because it's just uh, it just makes the games look better and look smoother. Same with anisotropic filtering. I usually set that to about four. Sometimes that can affect the games. If it does, I just switch it off anyway. And then everything else is just going to be kept at the default settings. Gamepad, this is where we're going to set up our gamepad. We have en enable rumble, turn that on and off. I like to keep that on and then these options here are all going to be things that you're going to find on the PCSX2 wiki that I'm going to show you later on. So some games require certain hacks. Some games require certain things to run a little bit better. So if you're having a problem with a game, like there's some ghosting, there's some blurring and things like that, this is where you'll find those settings for that. And we find that out on PCSX2. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. Okay. So on this page is the controls. This is where we set up the controller. It's automatically set up if you've copied over my Xbox uh, RetroArch files. So that's all set up standard already. So it will work like a PlayStation controller should be where A is X, B is circle, Y is triangle and things like that. But if you do want to change any of this, all you've got to do is find the relevant one. So button A, press A, that, that's cross, you can change that to triangle, change it to square, whatever you want, if that's if that's how you play your games, but I much prefer to keep it the way it's supposed to be. Mapped port here is which port it is on the PlayStation, port 1, port 2, so if you're playing like Metal Gear Solid 1, um, so if you was playing a game like Metal Gear Solid 1, not on a PlayStation 2, but on a PlayStation, you need to change the ports, PlayStation 2, to beat Psycho Mantis, that's how you'd do it if that was a problem with any games like that. And there you go, port two, so that's your second controller, you hook up to your Xbox, all set up already as well. So it, pretty much self-explanatory there. Disc control, if you have um, games that are require two discs, you can pop the disc in here and it'll load a disc. So if I load a disc in now on this BIOS, let's just load in, say, into the matrix. And there you go, the disc has been loaded in. It took a while to get in there, but it has been loaded in. And now if I press that, it should, in theory, load the game up. So this is where I will bring you to the PCSX2 wiki. So we're not having problems with this game, but if you go to this page, this web page, the PCSX2 wiki, and we go type in Enter the Matrix, the game that we're playing now. Find the page for it. And then it'll show on this game the status of it. So it's currently playable on Windows. So it's going to be playable on the Xbox Series S because it uses a derivative of Windows. And it'll come up with any issues or problems. There doesn't appear to be any problems on this. But it does give you decent ways of figuring it out with 
people that have tested it on their setups and some of the things that they've done to fix it as well. So let's just give this a quick go just to see um, how it plays. Start a new game, start it on normal. I played this on PC recently and it was it's quite a fun game. So you choose character, we'll go with Naomi. Can't remember if they have different stories or not. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. Thank you for so that runs really smooth. It was, I think it was the path of Neil that had the issues. One of the issues with this game, though, is the control, the weird control. Oh, it's inverted or sideways or whatever. And L1 is to... The camera controls are a bit backwards. And the tank, look at that tank. The tank controls are a bit... Let's kick him across the floor. Bit of bullet time. Oh, yeah, because you could run up walls, couldn't you? Right. Yes, I'm gonna have to. I want to play this again. I played the recent Matrix Experience thing, and it was quite fun. But it was just a walking simulator overall. It was just it was quite fun. The the little scene and stuff. There we go. Right. So to finish the game, we press Start and Select. Now, one thing I've noticed with PCSX Two is that when you finish a game, usually in uh, these emulators, you just go to the quick menu, you'd click Close Content. And that would just be fine. You'd be able to load up another game. But PCX2 does have this habit of crashing like that when you close content and bringing you back out. No worries. You just go back into RetroArch and load it back up. It's just an extra step that has to be done for PCSX2 because of the nature of that emulation. All right, so let's find a game that's possibly going to have a couple of issues like Matrix, The Path of Neo. So click Run. Let's find it on PCSX2, and there we can see there's a lot of glitches. In some areas in the game environment, Light Bloom have graphical glitches. So the workaround here is to go to Config, Video GS, Plugin Settings, Enable Hardware Hacks, go to Advanced Settings, Hacks, Check Merge Sprite, and set Half Pixel Offset to Special Texture. It is recommended to get to use the latest git revision right okay so looking at that that's got a couple of things that we need to look at so i press the start and select bit uh, i go to the options setting for the options of this core so basically what i'm looking for is merge sprite and set half pixel to offset i go to the options go all the way down and we go to the bit it's short emulation hacks in options and it's got speed hacks i've got that set to safe which is a default way to do it. It's going to find as many speed hacks as possible. So I don't think that's going to be any of an issue. Uh, these are the things that would probably pop up and you change some of these if, if it says so on the PCSX wiki, but it doesn't say that. What we're actually looking for is merge sprite. That needs to be on. And then we need to set half pixel offset to special texture on there like that and then we go back to here we click manage core options save game options because it's going to save an option so every time this game opens it uses these so we'll click the hacks merge sprite is on and half screen fix is set to is it half screen fix half pixel offset is set to special texture right that's all saved go up and click resume now i remember this game had a lot of bloom issues and like I said, not all games are going to be absolutely perfect. So let's see if that fixed the issues with the with the blur and the graphical glitches. Look like there's a lot of bloom issues here. Can, can you see that where it's uh where it's all reflective and it's not very good? This is issue with some PS2 games. So I've got a feeling that that's not been fixed and we may have to restart the content to see it. So we'll just play a little bit of the opening and see if that works. Okay, so the bloom is absolutely ridiculous. The lights are terrible. And I think the graphics, if you watch, <laughs> the, the physics are absolutely messed up because of it as well.
fight some security guards. Mr. Anderson. <laughs> oh, it's not as bad as it was yesterday. Yesterday, they were f when I was thinking. There we go. Watch. Yeah. Watch his body. It, it kind of like spins around. And we've crashed. The game's crashed because of it as well. So, nope. Not very good. Okay, so let's close that content. So we might as well just close RetroArch here. Quit RetroArch and see if what we've done has fixed it. Like I said, PCSX2 is the place to go to find all these workarounds and solutions. You go to PCSX2.net. The wiki page i'm going to leave a link for that in the description down below type in the game and see what state it is in and whether it's running and if there is any fixes to your problems but I, like I, you saw with enter the matrix a lot of the games do run smooth like that and you don't have to do anything to them really you can run them in 1080p you can run them in 4k and they will work fine but some games are going to need a bit of optimization such as this one here to be fair i think it looks better i can't really tell right now I think the bloom effect is still there and that's a result of direct 3d 11 direct x 3d 11 which is a which i think is the only core that is working on the xbox series 3 at the minute it's the only back end that's working on the xbox series x and s at the minute so hopefully in the future there'll be an update that will allow OpenGL to work and then these games will run a lot smoother okay so it's still looking like the bloom is going to be an issue the choice is you click the red pill um that's down to direct 3d 11 though i know on the pcsx2 on the pc when i change it to OpenGL, it works and direct 3d 11 does have a problem with some bloom but i haven't managed to get OpenGL to work on pcsx2 at the minute i don't know if it does work with this version of RetroArch. if anyone does know let me know down in the comments because i would love to figure this out and get the games running a lot better but let's see when we get into the game if that's fixed. And if it hasn't, then it's chalked and I'll have to move on and find a different game to play. But this is just an example of some of the things that can go wrong with PS2 emulation. Just proof that not every game is going to run perfectly. And you can do a bit of due diligence to sort that out using PCSX2 wiki. No, it's not fixed it at all. No, it's not. It's made it look a little bit better. It's just a bloom, man. Let's see. Let's check with the uh, the physics. Let's see if we fix the physics. Or oh, maybe this game was just poorly optimized. I don't know. But there we go. He's gone straight in my face. This game started off promising. There, and he disappears into air, and we crash. Can't get past that. Nope, that's that that game is it's chart. It's done. Let's close that content. It's gonna crash retro arc again. So there you go. That's just an example of a game not running well, and what could happen. So now I'm gonna show you an example of some games and me actually fixing one of the problems in the game. I don't think it's, it fixes all the problems in the game. Like the FMVs in this game are gonna be goosed. Uh, I'm not gonna show them because it may trigger someone's epilepsy, but what happens is in the FMVs of this game, uh, it does like flash really fast and then the bottom of the line is missing. And on PCSX2, it says to not, uh, not enable progressive scan in the menu but uh, I've tried all sorts of things. And even when I do not enable uh, progressive scan, it still does it. So it's still a problem that's happening. So if I go to the settings, I'll just check to make sure that everything I've got is, is the way it should be. 1080p, all the anisotropic filtering, FXAA that you want, all that stuff to make it look and run smooth. And then half pixel offset, which is what fixes the issue, is set to off default. And then... I'll show you what the issue is in the game. So let's just start a new game. Yeah, so as you can see on the screen at the minute, I don't know if you can see that very clearly, 
but there's vertical lines going down the side of the screen which is causing issues so to fix that we need to go into the hotkey again by pressing start and select and just like it says on the so main menu quick menu go to options so these are the options for this particular emulator we go to the hack section and we find half pixel offset and you won't change any of these unless you're told to by pcsx2 wiki or you can mess around with some of them yourself if you fancy a go at it but there, there's descriptions at the bottom of each one and um, but honestly uh, i wouldn't really bother if it doesn't work you can probably figure something out by by accident but a lot of this has already been done on the forums and stuff like that so if you have problems like this you can check that them forums out and you can check out the pcsx2 wiki a lot of the work has been done for us already so now that i've changed that i'm going to go to the video i'm going to change the i'm going to turn off the enable 60 fps for that. i'm going to turn off a lot of the stuff here to see if that fixes the issue with the fmvs i've yet to fix it so far i'll turn off these 60 fps patches as well just to see what that does and then i'll put it back down to native resolution and see if that fixes the issue it may not uh this is the this is what you do with emulation you test things and if it works it works if it doesn't it doesn't you try something else so i'll go to manage core options and save that file there like i just did so whenever god of war opens it's going to use that one and then i'm just going to quit retro app because like i said that's the only way to get back. That's the only way to restart content for PS2. With other cores, it doesn't work uh, like that. You can just close the content and start a new one. But with PC PCSX2, I've said that a lot today. That is one of the issues that you're going to come on to. So let's start God of War again. And let's see if those... So let's start God of War again. And let's just see if that issue has gone away. So we've got God of War USA. Good run. I'm starting to wonder if enabling progressive scan is going to actually work because I'm using interlaced and it's not working and maybe it's the other way around so I'll do that and we'll see okay so let's go to the options turn the music down for starters soften turn that off maybe and then progressive scan on let's see what happens when we have progressive scan on oh no turn it on and then turn to the main menu. Widescreen doesn't actually do anything on this. It just squashes the game. It just like crops it uh, to fit a widescreen TV. It's one a little bit of trivia there. Let's we'll start a new game. Let's the see if we can fix the issue. Have abandoned me. So again, I want to show a little bit. See, with progressive scan on, it doesn't flicker that much. But it does have this black bar at the bottom, which is now much better is than no the hope. FMV flickering. And so, cast himself progressive scan is apparently the way forward on the Xbox Series S and X. Like I said, you just got to mess with these things. And eventually you'll get the right solution. So I'd rather have this black bar at the bottom on the FMVs than have it the way it was before, which was flickering really badly. Like I said, I'm not going to show it because of possible epilepsy and things like that. But this seems to have worked much better than it was before. Well, let's see if those vertical lines have disappeared. And those vertical lines have disappeared. You can't see it yet. I don't think on your screen. But yeah, there we go. A little bit of stutter, but that's to be expected with PlayStation 2 games. So now what I'd normally do, but I'm not going to bore you with it, is because I've got that running and I've got those vertical scans off i'll go to the options and what i'd do is i'd start putting things back on i'd restart the game i'd try it again to see what was causing a lot of that issue so i'd go to the video settings i'd enable the 60 fps patch again i'd enable fxaa enable anisotropic filtering i'd bring myself back up to 
gradually up to 1080p, get all of that sorted, and then go to the core options, save that, make sure that that saves. So I'll delete the game options file and do all that. Make sure all of that is, be, is that, yep, all of that's on. Go to the hacks, half pixel offset is not set to special texture. That's the only thing I really want to change. Um, go back to the videos, find the, what was I doing? So an isotropic filtering, put that back up to two and enable 60 FPS. What was the other thing that I needed to do here? I think that's it really. Yep, good to go. Go to manage color options, save those. God of War USA options is now saved. I'll restart it, I'll try it again, I'll restart it, I'll try it again until I figure out what the actual problem is. And then once it's done, it's done. Okay, so my final thoughts on this is that PlayStation 2 emulation is never going to be perfect. I've had high-end PCs that still can't run some games and they're constantly working on it. And hopefully one day in the future, PlayStation 2 emulation is going to be absolutely flawless and we'll figure it out and it'll work. But it does run very well on the Xbox Series S. A lot of the games do run well. As you can see, I'm playing SmackDown. Here comes the pain right now, and it's running flawlessly 60 frames per second. A couple of examples that I have shown you are the outliers, like Enter the Matrix is a pretty bad playing game on this console. Shadow of the Colossus doesn't work very well on this console. Baldur's Gate is another one that doesn't work very well, but that for those that don't work very well, a lot of them really do. And for the ones that you think don't run well, you can just check out the PCSX2 wiki page and see if there's any fixes that can fix it for you. Because a lot of the community has already done this work for you. They've already fixed a lot of these problems. They, they say that they reckon about 90% of the games are all fixed and ready. But some of the ones that are most popular are not. I played San Andreas on this the other day. Works great. Vice City, fantastic. Grand Theft Auto 3, smooth as butter. Even Metal Gear Solid 3, Metal Gear Solid 3 required a little bit of tweaking, which is one of my favorite games of all time, but I managed to get that playable and looking good. So if this video has helped you, then please hit that like button. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to the channel. Triple H was the World Heavyweight Champion for pretty much all the time this game was out. That's, that's classic, that. I love that, like... Pick a game, Triple H's World Heavyweight Champion from 2002 to about 2008. Those purple trunks as well. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Hit that like button if this video has helped you out. Uh, if you have any questions, pop them down in the comments. I'm going to be doing GameCube emulation next, followed by probably N64, PlayStation 1. Those are the games that I play the most. Probably some SNES and Game Boy ones, but I'm pretty sure that this can handle GameCube. Uh, this can handle Game Boy and Super Nintendo games very well otherwise there is a problem with the emulator more than anything and i'm going to try and do some more retro arc videos uh, i've also got a couple of extra xbox stuff to do as well and i've got a couple of stuff to do on sermons things like that so um anyway like comment subscribe i don't know i don't know what to do at the end of these videos really there's the beast incarnate oh, this is when he was the next big thing smackdown here comes the plane i'm gonna get stuck into this i'm gonna get six man tag on the go i'm gonna be slapping it i've got triple h stone cold steve austin brock lesnar this was the era of uh wrestling kurt angle there this is the era of wrestling that i absolutely loved that's a problem but it's not it's not a bigger problem it's just the loading screens flashing a bit Oh yeah, I need to get out the ring. I'm not. Yeah, 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 I'm getting out. I'm getting out the ring. Don't worry. <laughs>